Yeah. Hello. Welcome into First Take. Hope you all had a great weekend. Appreciate you being with us. Your boy, he's back. No more panic. Stephen A. in What's the up? building. I'm Molly Karam, and we welcome the newest member. We are so fired up of the First Take family here, Max Kellerman. So good Thank to have you. Thank you very much. Let me just say, let's get it on. Yes. Bill's right. lane. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. Coming up on the show, make sure you stay tuned for the guys talking Derek Rose's super team in New York. You will not want to miss that. Like Max said, a lot to discuss. Let's get into it. We tip things off, of course, with Kevin Durant. KD has been a very busy man since Stephen A's last show. So here's what went down. He decided to leave the Thunder for the Warriors. Talked about why he didn't leave his bed for a couple days after the decision. Said he almost went to the Celtics because of one Tom Brady. And that he doesn't care if he is not liked. Then Sunday, Durant and Draymond Green were booed by the sellout crowd at Staples Center before Team USA's 106-57 win over China. However, Durant was unaware of the jeering. Stephen A., your thoughts on KD? I've been waiting a while to hear this. Going to the Warriors. First of all, let me say this. Mm -hmm. I'll preface my comments Welcome to the show, my man. Happy to have you. You know that. Um, look, I've waited a long, long time <laughs> to get into this about Kevin Durant because there have been so many misnomers that have been thrown out there. Let me be the first to say before I say anything else, Kevin Durant is a great basketball player. He's one of the top three players in the world, and he's a great person. OK, this is not to excoriate him the way a lot of people people took it to another level over the last several weeks. And I think that was totally wrong. I have no problem with Kevin Durant leaving Oklahoma City. I have no problem if he had gone to San Antonio, Miami, New York or someplace like that. All of these folks, including my friends Charles Barkley and Reggie Miller, getting on him because they believe that you should have stayed with the team, the championship contender that you were on, where you spent nine years. That's where you should have stayed. I'm going to flow with my boy Chris Rock when he got on the phone and told me, look, you can order sushi in San Francisco at 4 in the morning. You damn sure can't do that in Oklahoma City. We get all that. Here's my problem with Kevin Durant's decision, just to refresh everybody's memory. My issue is you went to the team who beat you. That's my problem. When I think about competition, competitive fervor, what it, it, what, what it's supposed to epitomize, if you had knocked off Golden State, I have no problem with you leaving. If you had beaten them. But when you are up 3-1, and not once, not twice, but three different times, you are 48 minutes away from a berth to the NBA Finals, knocking off a 73-9 and team. And on top of it all, not only do you fail to do so, but you come up short yourself in Game 6. When you come out there, you don't resemble who you are. You don't resemble who we know you to be. You rushing shots. You taking ill-advised shots. You shoot one on two, one on three. You just seem to be completely not yourself. And then you couple that with the fact that you turned over the ball six times in the last eight possessions. And then you quadruple that by, by going 0-3 with six turnovers in the last couple of minutes. You lose that game. You lose that series. You lose to that team. And they are the ones you go to? And did we find out that all along Draymond Green has been recruiting you? And that, you know, periodically throughout the season, you're sending one another text and all of this other stuff. I mean, who was it that was going up against Golden State over those last three games? That's what I'm saying. That's my problem. Now, certainly I'm not going to sit up there and, and cast aspersions on the character of Kevin Durant in terms of whether he was trying to beat him or not, because we all know he was trying to beat him. OK, this is Kevin Durant, what we, who we're talking about here. Let's pump the brakes on that, on those notions. But I'm just saying, damn, you're Kevin Durant. You're one of the top three players in the world. Your teammate is one of the top five players in the world. And you leave to go to the team that beats you. That, to me, is the story that's gotten lost in all of this. Everybody's sweating that he left OKC. OKC, get over it, okay? It's life. This happens. You know, I don't think he should have left in terms of there being a championship contender, but that's not the real issue. The real issue is Kevin Durant decided to go to join the team that beat him rather than be hell bent on competing with them once again. That is my issue, Max. That is where I stand. And my position hasn't changed one iota since July 4th. Stephen A., you don't miss much, but you missed this one. What? This is what you miss in all of this. Had the Warriors won the championship, 
then Kevin Durant could not go to the Warriors. I would be killing him right now. I'd be killing him. Okay. You can't go to a 73 win, all time winningest team, beat the Chicago Bulls record, back to back defending championship team, looking for a three peat. You can't do that if you're Durant, because the idea of winning championships is that it illuminates your greatness somehow. Mm -hmm. It proves that you can be in the nucleus, one of the best players on a championship team. It elevates your position in history. Had Durant done that, that would be reverse engineering his greatness. Okay. That would be joining a champion, and, and, and therefore, you know, just because you win a championship, saying that that has somehow had something to do with you. However, they lost. They lost to LeBron James, who is not the LeBron James who choked away fourth, four consecutive fourth quarters uh, against Dallas in Miami. That was a kid. This guy is in his prime. Maybe not physically anymore, maybe just past it, but overall in terms of his emotional understanding, intellectual understanding of the game, his basketball IQ, his calmness under pressure, his ability when he, when he falls on his wrist, when Draymond fouls him at the end of game seven in the fourth quarter, with, with you know all he needs to do is hit one free throw and they ice the finals and he misses the first one because of the wrist, makes adjustments and ices the game with the next one. That LeBron James, if you shoot at the king, you best not miss. And Kevin Durant recognized on, the, on the, the Oklahoma City Thunder, he recognized that while it's actually a more talented team than the Golden State Warriors, Kevin Durant was on the most talented team in basketball last year. They had the most talent. They lost to a less talented team that played the right way, that played in a way when he was watching them, where he has to be thinking, why am I dealing with this whole issue of who sh who's going to take the last shot and how much should everyone touch it when on that team, you know who takes the last shot? The open man. Let me go to that team. They play the right way. They play the way I want to play. And the fact that they didn't win the championship allows that to happen. I think he made the best possible hold it, choice. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Max Kellerman, am I hearing you correctly? Are you sitting across from me saying that on your first show, the very first segment of the first show, you're sitting here saying you have no problem whatsoever with Kevin Durant going to the Golden State Warriors? No problem. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. No problem. Really? Did they win the whole thing? No. They but, didn't win the whole listen, thing. Listen, listen. The I Warriors do. lost to LeBron James. Okay. So this is, okay, they lost in the conference finals. The Thunder did to the Warriors. They years lost. from now, conference finals, no one cares okay. years from now. Can I, can I get real? Can I get real? They did lose to the, to the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Great Finals. I do get that. And nobody is taking anything away from the stud that is LeBron James, who, I, I mean, all of us just need to shut the hell up about right. him. He, it, it's over. It's his it's, world. It's his, it's his, his world. world. We all just living in it, okay? Kyrie Irving, too. Steph Curry, Showed too. Showed up. Kevin Durant, too. And Steph Curry and Kevin Durant don't want to live in LeBron James's world I anymore. I feel you on that. But here's the flip side to this. Draymond Green gets suspended for Game 5. Andrew Bogut gets suspended in Game 5. Andre Iguodala gets hurt in Game 6 and obviously is a bit hobbled for half of Game 6 and obviously all of Game 7, although he played. I guess what I'm saying to you is this. A legitimate argument could be made in the eyes of some critics that if the Golden State Warriors hadn't been assisted, I'm sorry, if the Cleveland Cavaliers organization hadn't been assisted by the NBA in terms of suspending Draymond Green and then injuries because of the ones that Cleveland suffered. Well, just to ones, go around hitting everyone the, below the belt. All I'm trying to say to you is this. Well, we all, that's a different subject for another day. Me personally, can you prove it? Can you prove it? But here's the point that I'm trying to make. In the end, what it comes down to is, look, if you are Kevin Durant, there are a multitude of players, places you could have gone. I do agree with your point that, again, had he won, then, oh, all right, that doesn't mean you get up and leave after winning to go and join them. I'm simply saying it would not have been viewed the way that it's been viewed because you would have been a champion. You would have knocked off these guys. And so then you just decide that you want to go to a different place to live, and that is that. In this particular situation, it was one of those things where a legitimate argument could be made that Kevin Durant is thinking about the best way to beat LeBron James because he's he's a bit leery of his ability to pull that off. Oh, absolutely right. And and the idea that well, it's a super team with Steph Curry. Look at on paper, it's unfair. The NBA is so gangster. I mean, this is the way it's always been. The almost uh, with rare exception, once every decade a Pistons team wins or something like that, but the only teams that win are the teams where at the start of the season you look at the roster and you go, that's unfair. That's not even fair. How could they even play the season? Those are the only teams that win championships. And to Durant's credit, he may have enough humility to look at LeBron and say, 
I'm not there yet. And you have I no problem little, with this? And I you need, have no problem look, with this? Look. None? Look, when you, when you brought up before, as Eddie Murphy told me, no, Eddie Murphy go, didn't tell go, me anything, but, <laughs> but you brought up before the various excuses the Warriors have for having lost to the Cavs in the finals. Okay. You know, the first Bulls championship against the Lakers, the jo first Jordan championship, James Worthy gets hurt. No one cares about that. Now, what they look at is who won the championship. LeBron actually was the first in this era to recognize that when he went to Miami. Right. And Kevin Durant is actually Ooh. looking at that saying, you know what? Let me go to the best place for me. Well, I appreciate your brilliance in bringing up a point and just segueing me right into the point that I really, really wanted to make. I despise that comparison between LeBron James going to South Beach and Kevin Durant going to, Oak, uh, to Golden State. Let me... Let me educate some NBA folks out there about something. LeBron James going to Miami. What was Miami before LeBron James arrived? They were 47 and 35. They got bounced out in five games in the first round by the Boston Celtics. They were an average basketball team. Granted, they, both he and Chris Bosh joined D-Wade. It was supposed to be mellow, but that's a different sur subject for another day. Bosh and LeBron decided to go to South Beach and join D-Wade, so they came together. That's entirely different than Kevin Durant joining the 73-9 and team, who, by the way, were the reigning defending NBA champions when he was up 3-1 on them and couldn't close the deal. Those are two different worlds. Then when you couple that with the fact that you just said, not me, my, uh, I'm feigning ignorance. I'm feigning innocence and ignorance here. You, Max Kellerman, you're the dastardly individual that I've known you to be over the years, and I say that affectionately because I like dastardly. Here's the deal. You just finished saying, Kevin Durant, may have decided to do this because he's taken into account having to compete with LeBron James. I'm going to repeat this. He's one of the top three players on the planet. Kevin Durant is the real deal. If you are an average player or a second tier player, a supplementary piece that would be different but when you are the man you are not supposed to be scared of going against yeah, the but man you know what this era shows this era shows that all of our preconceived ideas about what you're supposed to do how you're supposed to act they don't apply so much anymore in the first place lebron going to miami in a sense is worse I, i'm okay with both moves but in a sense it's worse because his thought at the time was let me out talent the league and what he found when he got there is not so easy because that other team in Dallas, they play as a team, they have continuity, they have chemistry, they beat us partly as a result of that. Kevin Durant isn't simply trying to out-talent the rest of the league, not simply because if he was trying to do that, he'd stay in, in Oklahoma City. They just got done playing the Warriors, and you could see, even though the Warriors won because Oklahoma City choked, Oklahoma City was more talented. That was a choke job in game six. Yeah, Absolutely. You, you could see that Oklahoma City was the most. So again, he's going to the team that he feels plays the right way, where he doesn't have to worry about Russell Westbrook, who's going to take the last shot, what's the usage rate and everything, where you just... Take the easiest shot, where, where even the conversations about who's going to shoot last, him or Steph Curry, who's ever's open is going to shoot last. Why not give him this is, credit for look, wanting look, to do that? Look, look, man, we work in a show together for the first time. We go back years, Molly. I know this man. We're friends. Man, I, I can't believe what I'm hearing from you right now. It's like the easiest path to resistance. That's, I don't know this Max Kelman. I don't know you right now. I don't know you. This, this is where you're coming at me with? Oh, the, the easiest path to resistance. You, why not you? Julius Irvin, why didn't you just go and play for the Celtics? But Isaiah, only, how about you go to play for the Celtics? Michael Jordan, but, why didn't you just go but, and play for the Pistons? But only the easiest, only the easiest because of the style of play, not because of talent. And to your point about... You're one of the top three players in the world? In the world. No, he's not, because there's only, there's LeBron James. That's the only, it's, it's the top one player in the world, the top one player in the world, and then there's Durant or Steph or Westbrook or whoever else you want to talk look, about. Look. They're two different levels. You're being philosophical and, and technical here. You know what I mean, well, Max Well, Kellerman. if you I put, mean, he's, he's Kevin Durant, he's 6'10 with a 7'6 six, six man who'll pull up from 30 and averages 30 in the sleep. You see what Kyrie just did in the finals? That's true. If you put LeBron if you put Batman with that kind of Robin, then Kevin Durant looks around and goes, it's going to take a whole lot of maybe me and Steph and a coach who I like I, 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 I and agree. a system who I, I like. I agree that he might have been saying that, but for you to sit here and to say that you have no problem with it, I can't believe it. Charles, I can't believe way, what Charles I'm Barkley came out and criticized him. Charles Barkley basically did the same thing. It was a trade, not a signing. He was a little past his prime and everything, but he went to the team they couldn't get past in the conference. Yeah, but, but, in, but, in the be, conference. but being past your prime matters yeah, because, because it's you staring your own Barkley. mortality in the face. You're not 28 
28, 29 so let me get years old. We're averaging 27 and in your sleep and doing what so you want to do. Who, are, who is making these rules about how Kevin Durant no has rules. to plan out no his rules. career and his there, life? There, I, I'm not saying that. And I would certainly not go that far. You're right about that. My problem is, my, I want to emphasize, reemphasize, I am different from Reggie Miller and different from Charles Barkley in the respect that they lamented him leaving. I have no problem with Kevin Durant leaving. He has earned the right. He gave them nine years. He balled. He's one of the elite superstars in this game, and he's a great guy, too. So it's not about that. My issue with him would be the same issue with anybody. You are a superstar in the prime of your career on a championship contender, and you run to the team that beat you. They didn't win the championship. That's the issue. Okay. They, That's the issue. They didn't win the championship, and at the end of the day, at the end of his career, what's more important if you're Kevin Durant? That Stephen A. Smith once at the time said, oh, why are you going to the team that beat you? Or that are people going to remember that? Well, because it's you, they might remember that. <laughs> or are they going to look at your resume and say, he messed around and won three championships? Well, that's, that's fair. That's a good way to look at it. And from a business perspective, obviously that works. Uh, from a championship pedigree perspective, nobody's going to remember this in 20 years or care about it in 20 years. All of those things are relevant. What I'm saying to you is this. I don't think any of us in our position should ever condone nor endorse somebody going to the team, the championship caliber team. Yeah, no, nah, they caliber. I said caliber. caliber. I just said caliber. They didn't I, win it. I, 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 have, I, I do have somewhat Steph of a choked as bad as the Witch. Steph, I mean, it Steph is, choked as bad against LeBron as Durant uh, choked against Steph. You can say that, but also Steph Curry wasn't 100%. Throughout the finals, we all know that. Number two, he is a two-time Randy League MVP. You are clearly going there to share the wealth. It's almost like you don't want to be the alpha well, dog. I, all right, I'll and say this. I'll say this is where we agree. Okay. The greatest small forward who ever lived is LeBron James. I mean, that's yes. clear. He's better than Without Larry question. Bird. It's clear, right? Without question. And, and Durant should be right next to him. But even if he wins a championship or two or more in Golden State, as a result of this move, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they may say, that he's not Larry Bird, for example, because Larry Bird was alpha on his team, even though he was with McHale and all these guys, and, and was the centerpiece of a championship team that went up against those Lakers. And maybe Durant won't be remembered that way. Mm -hmm. But if he wasn't going to be remembered that way anyway, mm. you know, if, if it was just going to be, oh, that was great, he stayed in Oklahoma City. Sure, he never won a championship, but he well, stayed. I'd say, again, I'd, I'd, I'd rather saying, be the guy I that went saying to he should State. stay in Oklahoma City. I'm talking about going to the team that beat you. Yep. And here's what the bottom line is. And I'll close it by saying this. You damn well better win now. Oh, you thought there was pressure on LeBron to mm -hmm. win when he went to South Beach. You got the reigning two-time league MVP and Steph Curry, the best shooting backcourt in history in him and Klay Thompson. With Draymond Green coming fresh off a of 32-15-9 and nine in Game 7 of an NBA Finals. And you can't close. If this Kevin Durant better win a championship. He will. Okay. They will, he they better will win. Right. You can't ever count LeBron I mean, out, hey, but listen, they will win. Listen, I'm not knocking it. I expect him to win. You're right. And I hope he wins because I like him. But I'm telling you, he better win. You're right. Coming out of the gates, firing gentlemen. Agree to disagree. We'll leave it there. I have a feeling you might be on the same page with this next one.